It takes skill and expertise to turn molten metal into a precision quality product. Our employees have earned us the reputation of being a valued supplier of investment cast components. We are TechCast Incorporated. We can cast the difficult with precision. Hi, I'm Hank Harvey, president of TechCast. I'd like to welcome you to our company. We are a facility that has been in business producing investment castings for over 35 years. We are ISO 9001-2000 rated and have been for the past 12 years along with receiving our PED. We are a non-union facility. We have 80 employees. We have the capability of producing castings from a quarter of an ounce to 350 pounds. We have non-destructive and destructive testing. We also would like to demonstrate how we can convert weldments, machine parts, and other processes to the investment cast process, which may be able to show you reduction in cost for the parts that you now use in your process. TechCast is presently at 95% delivery performance with our goal of 98.7. With that, we'd like to take you on a tour of our facility so we can demonstrate the investment cast possibilities and how we could produce your parts to print. Thanks, and let's take a tour. Hello, my name is Annie Bomberger, Engineering Manager at TechCast. I'm going to cover some of the day-to-day -day tasks performed in engineering. Ultimately, we're providing value-driven solutions to help meet our customers' needs. At TechCast, we use modern technology in the form of 3D modeling, solidification and mold filling simulations, and a comprehensive MRP system to supplement the craftsmanship of the investment casting process. 3D modeling is used to design tooling, fixtures, and gauges. The 3D model is then used to develop gating systems through the use of solidification and metal flow simulations. These simulations provide valuable insight into the process with very rapid turnaround. Once the process is established, all parameters and work instructions are maintained in TechCast MRP system. This provides company-wide and shop-level access for all process information. Hello, my name is Andy Oscom. I'm Vice President of Foundry Operations here at TechCast. You've just seen the engineering portion of what we do here, and now I'd like to run you through what we do in manufacturing once your castings become production articles. First and foremost, you'll send in a purchase order to us. It will be reviewed by myself as well as quality and our metallurgy department. Following that, we'll begin the production process in our wax room. In the wax room, we will first inject your patterns. We have several manual machines to do this on or automatic presses depending on the type of tooling you've purchased. Once the patterns are injected, we will then begin the assembly process. Patterns will be assembled on either square triangle trees or panel trees depending again on size and gating requirements. Once the wax tree assemblies are moved to the shell building operation, we place them on hangers and these hangers will be picked up by our robots. The hangers will be dipped in first a prime coat slurry and then it will be dipped in subsequent what we call backup slurries. These backup slurries will be any number of coats anywhere from possibly three all the way up to as many as 12 or 15 depending on the weight of the metal we're going to pour in the shell. Once the shell building process is complete, the molds will be unloaded from the hangers and taken to the autoclave area. This is where we will de-wax the shells and get them ready for the melting operation. At that stage, they are then placed in what we call burnout furnaces, which are really large kilns. The shells will be fired to roughly 1900 degrees on average. At this stage then, we are ready to pour metal into the shells. Our furnaces here at TechCast are coilless induction furnaces. We will pour the metal into the molds uh, at the necessary temperature for the required alloy. Following the melting operation, the molds are allowed to cool. We will then start them through the finishing operation. The first process in that operation is knockout or shell removal. Following that process, we'll then move them forward to a spinner blasting operation where we will clean the bulk or the last of the remaining shell material off the trees. The trees are then at that stage ready to go to the cutoff area. Once in cutoff, we'll cut the castings off from the trees, sprues and runners. Following cutoff, we will move the parts to the grinding operation. Here we have a number of ways with which we can remove the gating from the castings. First and foremost, we like to do this in an automated way whenever possible. Uh, we have choices from uh, horizontal table grinds, rotary grinds, and we also have robotic grinding capabilities. If none of those ways are feasible to remove the gates, we will do it manually. 
following gate grind, all castings are inspected and we send our castings out for heat treat. Following the heat treat operation, all castings are final inspected 100%. Any value added services are then added, whether it be machining, plating, painting, etc. At that time, all our castings are packaged up per your requirements and sent on their way. Hi, my name is Dawn Miller. I'm the quality manager here at TechCast. You have just seen how the castings flow through the shop. It's our job in quality to assure your parts are to print. We do this through the following methods. Dimensional inspection, non-destructive testing, and destructive testing. Hello, my name is Sean McKinney. I'm Chief Metallurgist and Technical Director for TechCast Incorporated. Now that you've seen the process from wax through the finishing operation, you get to my key role in the foundry, which is to partnership with the quality department and control all the metallurgical integrity and quality related issues to all castings before shipment. Starting with the wax room, I'm responsible for all of the wax testing. We currently run a non-filled wax. We reclaim our own wax in-house. We complete all testing in-house in our own lab to include softening point, penetration, and ring and ball testing. I'm moving from the wax room to the dip operation where we handle dipping the, the raw wax into a ceramic slurry. I'm responsible for all of the ceramic slurry and the testing involved from viscosity to SiO2 testing to the pH of the slurry. All of the testing is done to maintain slurry stability. Moving from the slurry and the dip operation to the melt operation, I'm responsible for all chemical analysis in the melt operation and all alloy recipes to include all the carbon steels, stainless steels, and non-ferrous base alloys that we produce at TechCast. Leaving the melt operation and back into the lab that we have at TechCast, I'm responsible for all of the mechanical testing, such as tensile testing with a 60,000 pound tensometer. I'm also responsible for all the metallography equipment that we have on site, as well as uh, the wax testing in the lab as we referred to earlier. The only other dual facet of my job is working hand in hand with quality to handle any corrective actions um, or customer complaints that may come back to us. Now that you have toured our facility and seen our capabilities, you can see why TechCast has become a leader in the investment cast industry. When your requirements demand precision, quality, and on-time delivery, count on TechCast. Call us at 717-866-9009 or visit us on our website, www.techcastinc.com.